Hi everyone and welcome to Miss Estric Biology. I'm jumping on very quickly just to wish you all the best of luck for your exam tomorrow. By now you're probably feeling equally prepared and nervous. So I wanted to give you some last minute advice to make sure you can enter that exam confident and go in and get the grades that you deserve. So I'm gonna jump into my first tip, which is the most important tips. If you don't have time to watch the whole video, watch this tip and then the rest are bonuses, but this one's essential. So tip number one, for paper one is start at the back of the paper. At the back of paper one, there are 15 marks of long answer questions. And these are either gonna be split as a five, five, five marker, or a four marker, a six marker, and a five marker. And these questions are usually just knowledge questions. So the kinds of questions that have come up before are describe the structure of DNA, describe how the structure of cellulose links to the function, explain the five properties of water and so on. So it's linked to your knowledge. And if you have done solid revision, these questions are a great way to bank marks straight away. In comparison, that is, to the really challenging application questions or maybe practical questions, maths questions, which might take more time and you might not gain as many marks. So the reason I say to do these first is some students might run out of time. That's always the case. Some students might run out of time on an exam paper. And if they did, that means they'd miss those questions at the end, which they might have got full marks on or scored very highly on. And they therefore miss those for the sake of spending more time on questions that maybe they didn't pick up as many marks. So you've got to think strategy, go straight into the exam, turn to the back, answer that final question first, and hopefully you'll bank loads of those marks then go to the beginning and work your way through, feeling confident that you've got in the bank a load of marks already. Now, top tip number two follows on from that first one, and that is bullet point your answers. I am sure you've heard me say this so many times before, but I really, really want to make sure you're gonna do this in the exam tomorrow. The reason for that is bullet pointing your answers is gonna be useful for, first of all, the fact that you can check you've definitely put in enough marks for the number of marks the question's worth. So if the long answer question at the back is five marks, make sure you've got at least five bullet points. I say to do six, just so you've got a backup in case one of them wasn't worth a mark. So it's good to help you check you've definitely got in enough marking points. But it also means you'll probably write your answer more concisely. That will also make it easier and quicker for you to check your answers and make sure you've got a key marking point in each bullet point. But it also means it's gonna be easier for the examiner to mark and therefore they're less likely to make a mistake. And they're only human, they do make mistakes. Now you are allowed to bullet point every single question on paper one. There is nowhere where it says you are not allowed to do that and you can do that. So please, please follow that piece of advice to speed you up in the exam and improve the quality of your answers. Tip number three is again following on from this. Not only are you allowed to bullet point your answers, but you can give your answer as a table. So that is my tip number three. If this works for you, and this one might not work for everyone, but if you've got a comparison question, you can bullet point your answers, but also split your page into two to show these are the two things I'm comparing. And then you've got your comparative bullet point lists. So if they're going to say compare and control trust a eukaryotic DNA to a prokaryotic DNA. You can bullet point the similarities, the differences, but the one thing you do have to make sure of is you do have comparative points on the same row. Because in the mark scheme, they do insist that you have comparative points. So if you're going to say that eukaryotic DNA is linear, whereas prokaryotic DNA is circular, Instead of having that sentence, you could have it as a bullet point on both, but you'd need to have it as a comparative appearance, meaning the same row on your table. So that could help some of you to make sure that you are definitely comparing the points and that you are having similarities, differences, and that you have enough points on a table. Tip number four is linked to stress and anxiety in the exam. This is one of your first A-levels and it's definitely the first A-level paper for biology. So it's natural if you do feel a little bit anxious and maybe even overwhelmed in the exam. So my tip for this is have some techniques in advance that you've practiced. And I know the exam's tomorrow, but you can think about this now. Think about maybe trialing the box breathing technique. So that is when you breathe in for four seconds, hold your breath for four seconds, and then you release for four seconds as well. 
and that can really slow down your heart rate and calm you down. So if you do find that you're getting anxious in the exam, try the box breathing mechanism. And for some people, it can actually just be to do with how you're sat in your chair. So some people feel calmer when they are essentially grounded, meaning you have got your feet flat on the floor, you're sat upright and just take a minute, take a deep breath and just bring yourself grounded back into the room and see if that helps as well. Tip number five linked to this idea of stress and anxiety is please do not stay up too late tonight. I know that makes me sound like a parent saying this, but it is so important that you get a good night's sleep. I know you can't control how well you sleep, but you can control how late into the evening you are thinking and doing work. So I'd say don't go beyond nine. If you can stop before then, even better. So you have a chance to unwind relax, let your brain switch off to all of that and try and get a good night's sleep. And then following that, making sure you've got a really good breakfast, having plenty of water, all those usual things, just make sure you're looking after yourself. Tip number five is reading those questions carefully. It's very easy to skim read a question and miss an exact instruction. So maybe they say state and describe or describe and explain. So read the questions carefully to make sure you're not missing one of the commands that they're giving you, but also read all the information carefully. Whenever I go through exam questions like live in front of my class, I always make sure that I'm underlining the information as I go. And I often annotate what things mean because for me personally, it helps me process the information and understand what I'm being told before I then even get to the question. And because I've done that, when it comes to answering the question, I'm so much quicker because I already understand the information above and can start to pick out what I think would be relevant. So do make sure you're underlining, annotating everything to try and make sure you don't miss any key information. Okay, so that is it. I'm going to let you get back to your work or relaxation or dinner, whatever it is that you're doing to prepare for the exam tomorrow. But I just want to wish you a final good luck message. I'll be thinking of you all and I'll definitely be going to check out the paper afterwards to see what I think and to see what all of you think as well. So let me know how the paper goes for you. I'll be posting on TikTok straight away afterwards. So let me know your thoughts. But for now, good luck.